In these lessons, we'll cover installing IPython Notebook using a Python distribution called Anaconda. Anaconda is a very convenient way to install Python, IPython Notebook, and various other libraries and tools relevant to data analysis. However, Anaconda is not the only way to use these tools on your computer. While we won't be able to cover alternatives in depth, let's briefly take a look at some of the other ways you can get IPython Notebook onto your computer. First, there's Canopy from Enthought. Canopy is very similar to Anaconda. It's an easy, one-click solution for installing all of the parts necessary for data analysis in Python. It'll install IPython Notebook, it'll install Matplotlib, it'll install NumPy, Pandas, and anything else that you need. You can learn more about Canopy at nthought.com. Next, there's a Python distribution provided by ActiveState. ActiveState Python is not specialized to providing a data analysis environment. Instead, it'll install a standard Python programming environment, on top of which you can install all of the packages, libraries, and tools that you need. You'll need to use a tool like pip in order to install the additional libraries. So you'll have to install pandas, numpy, matplotlib, and the others manually. You can learn more about ActiveState at activestate.com. Similarly, if you just want a pure Python environment, you can go to python.org, and install Python in the standard library using the installers provided. There are installers for all languages, and they'll install for you Python, the standard library, and a couple of basic tools that you can use. Again, you'll have to install all of the additional libraries yourself using a tool like pip. Finally, I want to show you one of the simplest and newest ways to get started with IPython Notebook. It's a project from the IPython developers and some folks at Rackspace. It's called tempmb, and I think it's really cool. Go to tempmb.org, wait under one second, and suddenly you'll have a temporary IPython notebook ready to go. I haven't installed anything to my computer, everything is online. Because I haven't installed anything to my computer, I will have to manually upload all of my notebooks before I start working, and manually download all of my notebooks when I'm done working. The IPython notebook provided to me is temporary, and there is currently no mechanism for user accounts or data persistence. Some libraries that I may want to use have not yet been installed, but most common ones are available. You can see NumPy is available, Pandas and Matplotlib, although some obscure libraries may require me to install them manually using a tool like pip. I think tempmb is one of the coolest ways to get started with IPython Notebook, because it doesn't require you to do anything but go to tempmb.org. However, for these lessons we'll be using Anaconda, since we'll want to keep track of all of the work that we're doing, and we'll want to have some local copies of our files. As you'll see, Anaconda is very easy to use as well. In these lessons, we'll do a little bit of data analysis using a library called matplotlib. Matplotlib is one of the oldest libraries for data analysis in Python, and it's very well supported in IPython Notebook. However, it's not the only library that we can use for data analysis. In fact, this is a burgeoning field in the Python community, and there are numerous alternatives. While we won't be able to go into all of the alternatives in depth, let's briefly take a look at a couple of them. First, there's a data visualization library called Bokeh. You can go to bokeh.pydata.org and see a couple of very neat examples. In addition to Bokeh, there's a tool from a company called YHAT called ggplot that's very similar to the ggplot2 library in the R language. A colleague of mine, Jake Vanderplas, is working on another project that helps bring matplotlib and d3.js together for data visualization. It's called MPLD3. You can see one nice thing about this is it can produce very nice interactive visualizations. Finally, you may have heard of a tool called Vega. Vincent is a Python library that allows you to work with Vega and D3. Here's an IPython notebook that shows a couple of different examples using all the different visualization tools. You can see that there are a number of different libraries, and some of them are interactive, some of them aren't. You can see that some of the libraries that we just looked at can produce some very beautiful visualizations. They can also produce interactive visualizations, and very complex visualizations with a lot of moving parts. However, for these lessons, we'll stick with matplotlib. It's the standard library for data visualization. It's one of the oldest libraries we have. It's a library with a lot of online documentation, and it's actually a very useful, very customizable library for doing visualizations in Python.